Hello guys, welcome to my channel. This is the 20th tutorial in this course and in this tutorial we are going to check out the nested if-else construct. Now what is nested if-else? It's basically an if-else within the body of um, another if statement or the body of an else statement, right? So what I mean is that it is fine if we write an entire if-else construct within either the body of an if statement or the body of an else statement. and you know, I'll just demonstrate the thing to you guys um, through a program. And uh, as you can see, for this tutorial, I've created a file and I've um, named it. It's called nested underscore if underscore else dot C. On line one, I have a comment and I have the header file and the main function in there too. So we can type in the code and the program is going to be really simple. What I'm going to do is I'll declare a variable. I'll ask the user to enter either one or two as input. And then I'll store the input in the variable and then I'm going to use if to check whether the input entered is one or two or if it's something else, right? But I'm not going to just use if, I'm going to use nested if else. And uh, that's how we're going to see what nested if else is. So let's just get started. I will declare the variable first, I'll call it a and I declare it by typing in int space a and uh, on the next line I'll use printf to display a message to the user on screen instructing him about what he's supposed to do so enter one or two that's the input we expect and uh, then I'll use scanf with the percentage d format specifier here because uh, our variable is of the integer type and uh, I'll provide scanf the address by using the address of operator there and the name of the variable and uh, now I'm going to use if to check whether the value that's provided to us is one or not and the way I do that is by having the test condition a equal to equal to one that is we'll have to use the equal to symbol twice here because we're going to perform an equality check whether a is one or not and within the curly braces I'll use printf to display the message uh, you entered one right and this printf statement would get executed only if the input that's provided is one now what if the input is not one well, for all those cases, we have to have an else uh, block and within the else block, we are going to check whether the input provided is two or something else. And we're going to use an entirely new if else statement to do that, right? So within this else block, we're going to have another if statement and uh, the test condition for this if statement is going to be a equal to equal to two. That is, we're going to check whether the value that's stored in a is two or not. And if it is, then within the curly braces for if, we're going to have a printf statement that's uh, going to display the message you entered to, right? Pretty simple that is. And if the input provided is not to, then we're going to have an else statement that's going to correspond to the second if statement and it's going to cover all other cases. So within the curly braces for this if, this else, sorry, I'm going to have a, a printf statement. What am I doing? And uh, within double quotes, I'm going to display the message, what's wrong with you, right? Put a semicolon to terminate this statement. I'll save the file and click on build and run. Let's see the output first. And then I'm going to talk you, I'm going to talk you guys to the program one more time. So in the output window, I see the message enter one or two. And if I type in one and press the enter key, I see the message you entered one on screen. And uh, let me run the program again. This time I provide two as the input. I press the enter key and I see the message you entered two. And if I provide something else as the input like 15 and press the enter key, I see the message was wrong with you. So all the cases here have been covered. And let's see how we managed to do that. Now firstly, you, know, you should uh, make a note of this, that we have an entire if else statement within the block of the within the else block of, uh, you know, the first if statement. So we have an if else statement within another, uh, within, within, you know, within the else block of another if else statement. And there is no limit to this. You know, you can um, have nesting as deeply as you want in your program. C doesn't impose any restrictions on how many ifs and else's you can have within the bodies of, um, you know, ifs and else's. Basically, you can, you know, be as fancy as you want to be, right? But uh, there are a lot of other ways of uh, doing fancy things and you know we're going to check out the switch case statement later on and 
that statement can be used to have a cleaner code and code that's more manageable and code that's easier to understand. So you won't have to rely on nested if as much, but it's uh, a construct that a lot of programmers use. And I just want to do, you know, spend a tutorial talking about it. So that's why I demonstrated it to you. And um, this program uh, in itself is very simple to understand. You provide one as the input and this uh, test condition value is true. So this printf gets executed. If you don't provide one as the input, well, then we get inside the else block. And inside this else block, you have another if statement that checks whether the input is two or not. So if it is two, then this printf gets executed. And if it's not two, if it's something else, then all the other cases are covered by this else statement that you have here. And within the block of this else, you have another printf that displays the message, what's wrong with you. So that's it for nested if else construct. I'm gonna see you guys in the next tutorial in which we're, dis we're gonna discuss something important for sure. So stay tuned for updates and please subscribe to my channel in case you haven't already. And uh, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon.